It's a troubling affair Let's just say for argument Black magic's in the air A thief comes in unnoticed Mingles about the place Bold his life He grabs her and he makes his getaway Out of nowhere Comes a flying friar Reuben J Unhand her USOB It ain't gonna end this way And this way All three of them roll on the floor and it's no laughing matter. Thief runs away, Chase saves the day, now he's back to making bad. There's an angry mob with torches and they're running through the cobblestone streets. They'll hang him if they catch him, there's a cop down on the beat. They throw him in the backseat for his very own protection. What men won't do for love and a handful of confection. shakes like that. Twist and shout! There it goes, twist and shout! Come on, come on, come on, come on, fritter! Have you gotten a good shot of the glazing yet? Well, I invite you to take a look. The do here is glazing banana fritters, out of the fryer, onto the glazing table, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna, uh, it's actually quite a nautical process. Believe it or not, because this uh, this instrument here, this is actually called the clam. Don't the claw? The claw is not its correct name. This is the glazing clam. What you do is you scoop it up, full of glaze, and then you open it up, and it's it's a waterfall of glaze from the clam over the fritters. That's how it's done. But like after you know, six, seven months of working with them, I mean, suddenly it's like, dude, you're fluent in Swahili, and uh, he uh, he is, he's totally fluent in Swahili. So I think he kind of came to us and was all like, hey, how do you think about if I teach Swahili lessons here on Mondays? You know, and I'm like, great. This will be great side by side footage with last night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maporo <laughs> moto. Nita mpoke a JD then what? Hamna Noma. Let's get a, a big Hamna Noma out of everybody. Hamna Noma. I'm addicted to donuts. It's horrible. I don't enjoy them. I have a few. I go up. I start to go down. I reach for another. Classic addiction pattern. Food. I mean, cookies and cream is really good, and, and you just kind of you mix you miss. Mixed taste. We sort of just wander the aisles of stores and just kind of say, imagine, uh, imagine chocolate. What about putting Butterfingers on donuts, you know? It's, you know, it's it's a process and you just kind of, you, it's, you have a bunch of stuff, you kind of mix combinations and you see what sells and some things sell and some things don't. And that's another thing about not being in the industry. We're, we're breaking the norm and, and breaking the mold of the industry by trying something different. I mean, you don't just have to have chocolate on a donut or maple on a donut, you know, there's there's a million ways to make it a million times fatter. You can make it sweeter, you can give it some sing, a little ginger or whatever. Wasabi. Yeah, we did the wasabi donut, we had the oyster donut. The oyster donuts. <laughs> you know, all types of different donuts and some of them really, really taken off and others, you know, kind of, you can't forget the triple cream filled cotton balls that comes in a pink. Who can forget the triple that is the, that's balls like that comes the in a top pot. shelf that we came up with? It's really, it's that's man. I was in Playboy magazine. 
Yeah. You know? It's just it's just great to watch a homophobic straight eighteen year old boys all order one T V and giggle and then all sit down in the corner and all like share it. <laughs> Gobble down this testicle. And Aubrey here was uh, the winner of Cockfest two thousand four. We draw the curtains, we had porn up there, we had a loft, we block all, the, all this off. You had to be 18 or over to come in. It was 10 bucks to enter the contest, or 10 bucks to come in inside, and $5 to enter the contest. So, and they'd have five minutes by the time they started the ladder to go up there, get erect by themselves, and put these donuts, especially prepared donuts, on their penis, and then stand up. <laughs> Tell us what you did. Basically, um, I have a half-inch hole through the head of my penis, so I just stuck up uh, some coffee stir stuff all up. Nobody else can get an erection, so I won by default. We're gonna offer weddings and just do a new thing. We did some research and we've added on our own little twist of, of donut heaven to the ceremony and everything. But we both were Universal Life Ministers before we opened. And he he done it. I've done a couple of other weddings. You know, some people show up and want, they really don't care about the ceremony. That was one of my, one of my charges too. If you don't want the voodoo ceremony, it's 50 bucks more. Um, we had this immigration interview because now I'm trying to get my green card and everything. So we went there with all our pictures and everything. So the immigration officer was all serious, asking me questions, and very serious questions. And I was like, and I told her we got married at Voodoo Donuts. And she just smiled and just like big smile on her face. Oh, really? There we get you approved. We love Voodoo Donuts. We have like a concept, but we didn't know how to make donuts, which is sort of a new uh, bad idea. Yeah, yeah baffled, and they weren't they weren't sure. And, and they laughed. They they, they showed us everything and gave us really good training, but they laughed and yeah. thought it was all silly. And today, you're one of our uh, biggest fans. Tim though. said that uh, he even doubted the name. He thought Voodoo was too Voodoo. You know, it was going to freak people out. And you know, we always have said that Voodoo Donut is. There's a lot of O's in Voodoo, you know, so that they look like donuts. People bring in their parents. And what's cool, too, is the switch. I like the parents that bring in the kids, because the parents that come in and they know about the cool donut shop, because they come in at, like, 7 in the morning and get donuts for the office. And then they come in at night and, like, expose their kids to it, which is pretty cool. And it goes the other way a lot, too, but there's plenty of parents that are all smug that they know about Voodoo Donut and, like, Kids don't yet, so it's pretty good. I'm the evil auntie. Uh, I'm still making them go to school tomorrow. The older two kids are taking them to school tomorrow to share with their friends. We really want it to be a tourist destination too. I mean, it's, it's the cool thing to come to in Portland for sure. A dream was, and it's already happened, but I mean, we would talk before we opened it. It's like, wouldn't it be cool if people that came from the airport directly here, like before they checked in and stuff? And that's happened. Like, people are like, they have their suitcases, they take a cab, they're staying in the embassy suites. They're like, that's our first stop, man. We're at Foodie Donut. We're going to take donuts to the hotel. Like, awesome. While you would be thieves, scoundrels, jokers, pranksters, varlets, we've got a voodoo doll with your name written on it. You guys want a donut or anything? 